This is shuttle launch control at T-minus nine minutes and holding. The Gox vent arm or beanie cap has just been retracted and will be moved to the side momentarily. Uh, at that point, uh, we'll have uh, several important milestones still remaining uh, in the, the countdown. When we come out of the, uh, the count, or come out of the hold and begin the count once again, the ground launch sequencer will take over command of the remaining events as well as monitoring the shuttle system's response. At T-minus seven minutes, the orbiter access arm will retract. At T-minus five minutes, the auxiliary power units will be started. At T-minus four minutes, a purge of the main engines will start. And at T-minus two minutes and 55 seconds, liquid oxygen pressurization will begin at 1 minute and 57 seconds, liquid hydrogen pressurization, uh, pre pressurization will start. And at T minus 28 seconds, the redundant set sequencer will take over. At that point, events happen far too quickly, and readings of systems must be done too fast for humans to perform. At the present time, we're waiting for uh, NASA test director George Page, our launch director, uh, to uh, uh, say a few words uh, to the crew about the procedures which will be followed. The, the gaseous oxygen vent arm, uh, the cap has been uh, retracted, and the arm is uh, just about to move away from uh, the external tank. At the present time, Everything going very, very smoothly. The gaseous oxygen vent arm now is moving back to the retract position, getting it out of the way so that the orbiter can lift off uh, at the and clear the tower properly. The launch director coming up to speak to the crew. Launch director is uh, talking to his team about the launch commit criteria at the present time. Launch director is going through the uh, the commit criteria with the launch team, and he is telling them that if they see something that would require that uh, we cut off, that that is the thing to do, that we are not going to be taking any chances. Uh, everybody will be talking on the same channel, on what's our channel 212.
Okay, uh, this is MTD on uh, 212. I'd like the verification. Uh, from that was shuttle launch list. control. Our launch director, George Page, reading a, um, pre a message from President Reagan to the Columbia crew, which began, you go forward this morning in a daring enterprise, and you take the hopes and prayers of all Americans with you. Uh, launch director George Page added his uh, best wishes. He said, we wish you an awful lot of luck and that we are with you 1,000% on the trip. We are just about to come out of this uh, T-minus nine-minute hold uh, in just about two minutes from now. We are having a check of the managers who are monitoring uh, this morning's launch, and uh, all of them who have been polled so far said that they are ready to go. Uh, we'll be ready to pick up in just uh, about a minute and a half from now. This is Shuttle Launch Control. Stand by 30 seconds. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus nine minutes and holding. We are approximately 26 seconds away from picking up the countdown at the T-minus nine minute point. Nine minutes remaining between now and 7 a.m. when we expect to have a liftoff of America's first space shuttle. Uh, the launch team has been briefed on the way in which a halt can be called to the countdown. During the final nine minutes of the uh, countdown, and we're coming out. We're at T minus nine minutes and counting. The launch events are being controlled by the ground launch sequencer now that has been initiated and that will be in control up to T minus 25 seconds when they switch to the onboard redundant set launch sequencer. The ground launch sequencer is a part of the launch processing system and operates by relaying commands to the orbiter's onboard computers, which then report back to the launch processing system that the commands have been executed. The primary job of the computers is to check that all of the launch commit criteria, such as propellant loads, temperatures, pressures, and other measurements, are satisfactory. The primary chase aircraft have taken off. Uh, a third T-38 will take off at the T-minus five-minute mark. The timing of this plane uh, is such a tight window that a 15-second delay would mean that they would not be in the proper position at launch. The sleek T-38 supersonic trainers have such critical timing because of the small fuel load that they carry. T minus seven minutes, 52 seconds, and counting. Uh, approximately 40 seconds away from movement of the orbiter access arm. Uh, this is the final arm which was to be moved out of the way to provide for the orbiter uh, to clear the tower properly. Uh, this may be a very uh, interesting launch to watch from the standpoint that the orbiter is able to translate uh, slightly horizontally as it begins to lift off and it also does a roll maneuver uh, which will uh, place it, uh, the orbiter sort of on its back as it goes uh, towards the uh, proper inclination to the equator. T 
T minus seven minutes, seven seconds and counting. T minus seven minutes and counting. And we have retraction of the orbiter access arm, beginning to move back first uh, away from the orbiter and then to swing away. This was the walkway attached to the service structure and used by the crew to walk to the orbiter. The crew has been advised uh, to lower their helmet visors. Very slow movement by the orbiter access arm. T minus six minutes, 29 seconds and counting. The crew is beginning the APU pre-start. Uh, this, the start begins at the five minute point in the countdown. T minus six minutes, 15 seconds and counting. The APUs are turbine devices fueled by hydrazine, which provides hydraulic power to change the angle of the engines and the flight surfaces on the orbiter. T minus five minutes, 59 seconds and counting. Pilot uh, Bob Crippen had begun that APU pre-start, which uh, started about 48 seconds from now. The development flight instrumentation, which measures the stresses on the orbiter during flight, have been turned on and recorders uh, uh, store information for playback after landing. T minus five minutes, 30 seconds, mark and counting. Pilot Bob Crippen has signified the auxiliary power units are ready to be started. T minus five minutes, 15 seconds and counting. Coming up on the five minute point, four, three, two, one, mark. T minus five minutes and counting. We have had a go for APU start. APU start is in work. This is a start sequence. The final chase plane has taken off from Patrick Air Force Base. T minus four minutes, 42 seconds and counting. T minus four minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Once we get the APU start, we have a total of 12 minutes of hydrazine supply for running the APUs prior to a liftoff. Everything going very smoothly in this count. The APU start is complete. T minus four minutes, 10 seconds and counting. As preparation for main engine ignition, the main fuel valve heaters have been turned off. T minus three minutes, 57 seconds and counting. The final helium purge on the shuttle main engine has been started in preparation for engine start. The liquid oxygen replenish system has been turned off in preparation for pressurization of the tanks uh, for the launch. T minus three minutes, 35 seconds and counting. The Elevon speed brake and rudder are being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to assure that they'll be ready for use in flight. T minus three minutes, 20 seconds and counting. The shuttle is now on internal power. However, the fuel cells are still receiving their fuels from the ground support system for one more additional minute. 